Good afternoon. Uh, my name is Raul Stratov, and I'm head of marketing sales at, uh, at Katana PIM. Um, I'm going to keep it a little shorter because I think a lot of stuff has already uh, been covered. I uh, just want to make sure uh, I show how to manage, uh, how we manage uh, the spare parts, but mostly also the different product relations uh, within the systems uh, that you have to encounter. Uh, Katana PIM um, focuses on clients, uh, manufacturers, brands, wholesalers who want to be active on multiple online channels. So that can be a web shop, that can be uh, also marketplaces, but also dealer portals or just a, a different feed that you want to send to a dealer. Uh, and what is the best way to manage it? And I think one of the things that you encounter, especially with selling on different online channels, is that that online channel will determine what kind of content you have to add. So that's also something we really focus on within our features to making sure it's very easy to create like a single source of truth for all that product information for those different systems but also for those spare parts. So how can you use a PIM not only as a single source uh, for all your product information, but also use it as something you can uh, use for your customer service, but also for your sales in getting to all your product information, getting to the right parts, especially managing spare parts, of course, uh, because this focuses mostly on uh, manufacturers. So let me get into, uh, into our system. So what you see here is a dashboard. And of course, it just creates a quick overview of everything that goes on within our system, uh, within your product scheme. Uh, and we have a multi-channel solution. So basically what you can do is you can create different assortments uh, for different uh, different channels that you have. So it can be a web shop, that can be an ERP, uh, that can also be a spare part or maybe a channel integrator uh, for your marketplaces. Uh, I focus for today, um, I focus on the barbecues. Summer is closing, uh, it's coming to an end. So I try to Enjoy it a little bit with watching some barbecue parts as well. And what you have is uh, with every uh, with every channel, you basically also create your own dashboard. So you, within your own dashboard, you see what goes on. How many products do I have? What kind of to-dos do I have uh, as well? Uh, same thing, uh, what we have is with our workflow. So what we have with our workflow is basically it gives every user the list that he has to work on. So basically when I come in, I log into the system, I directly see the type of products that I have to work on. So when I go to my product overview, there's a lot of different ways to filter. And I think this is very important, especially if you put your main products that you're gonna sell in the different channels, but also manage your spare parts into the same system, you're probably gonna have like a bigger, bigger assortment. So that can vary probably to a couple thousand to a couple million products. Uh, and it's very important to get to the right products right away. So if just thinking from a product workflow where I say, okay, I'm responsible for getting all the product data for the ERP ready, the basic data. I'm just making a short uh, selection and I just get my work list right away. So I'm gonna go from working out the content and then working towards the product relations. So if I go to a Kamado Excel and work for the product information there, the first thing that stands out is a completion page that they have. So basically built on a uh, highly configurable solution on the workflow that we have, um, you can just set up different steps on what you want in your completion, uh, but also in your workflow. And you see here that the basic data, that the SKU is missing. So if I'm responsible for managing this basic data, I know I have to fill in the SKU right away. Otherwise, this product cannot go, uh, cannot be published or cannot go to the next one to, uh, to work on the next channel. So going into the system, uh, of course, I want to fill the SKU as quick as possible, make sure it's saved. Uh, and the next step, and what you see is it's a multilingual solution, of course. So all the content you put in, uh, all the content directly is also a multilingual setup. So what you see a lot, especially with selling in different channels, is you want to also have like you want to have the English standard, but maybe you also want to have like an English for a certain sales channel. So all the basic fields uh, are there, of course. You have your short description, long description. Uh, maybe you want to fill in some SEO data because you have a brand store. But most importantly are the different attributes. So a lot of, uh, especially manufacturers now, what you see with more like a D2C uh, strategy that comes up is brands and also manufacturers are managing their product data more and more. Uh, and what we did is we created a different way or an easy way just to manage it. So responsible for the, being responsible for the content, what you want to do is you want to do as less limited work as possible. Uh, you just want to work off a dropdown. So you cannot make any manual errors as well. And the good part of it is here is it's a multilingual solution. 
So if I look at the color and I work in a standard language, it's going to be in this situation was English. Uh, all the translations are there. So it's very easy just to add the options. From the options, you can add the different translations. So it's very easy. So I manage in my standard language. But then if I add the new translations, everything is set up from the feeds as well. And this also allows me to add a new language very quickly because you just do an export, you send it to a translation agency, and the translation agency maybe gives the French language back and you just import it. That's like a five minute job for the content manager at that moment. Uh, so working from here, uh, if you know I'm selling a barbecue, you know which kind of data you always have to fill in. So in this situation, I set up the color, the weight, the barbecue method, working as much with the drop downs as possible. But also maybe you want to add, because if I'm going to sell on a certain channel, let's say for uh, instance, Amazon, uh, I know I always have to fill in certain use, uh, certain USP fields, or maybe just a second attribute. And I just want to add those groups there. So it's very easy to add new attributes uh, and work off that. Same thing for images. So just add the images, drag and drop. Uh, it can go to an FTP environment, can go also uh, through an import feed mapper, which I'm going to show a little bit later. Same thing, manufacturer, so you can add brands. So for uh, also for uh, important uh, for uh, filtering uh, within the API and everything. And then we come to the product relations. So basically what you want to set up is as much of your product relationships as possible. So that can come from an ERP, but it's also something you can add manual. So that can go from a related product, which basically is an alternative product. So if you're... Kamado XL is maybe sold out or maybe it's uh, it's stuck uh, stuck on a, on a ship somewhere. Um, you can say, okay, I have still have the large or the Excel uh, Guru uh, available. Basically the same thing goes for the spare parts. So you can just add some extra spare parts there. And then next is this uh, different uh, spare parts. So what you wanna do is create a two-way connection between the spare parts and your main product. So it's very easy for your colleagues to navigate when they, when they get questions. And the way we view spare parts basically now is instead of just having an ID or just having a short, uh, short overview of which spare parts are available, I want to have as much data in the spare part as possible because basically it's also a sellable product because I want to make sure, let me close this one. Uh, I want to make sure that if I put a uh, online catalog ready so I can have a, a very simple solution where visitors just can go and just find spare parts or maybe find connections uh, in my system, uh, I have all the right information. So even for a spare part, what I want to make sure is I put all the data in there as well. So I put all the attributes, I put all the translations in, so it's very easy to find. But also, again, the two-way connection. So if I, if I have a spare part called the thermometer, uh, I want to know on which barbecue does it go. So I create a short uh, overview just as where the barbecue are, are heading to. So this is how you manually can put a lot of data in. So the other thing is a lot of our manufacturer clients, what they do is they get a list from suppliers uh, through an Excel or uh, to a CSV or whatever. So what we do is we create a feed mapper. So basically, if you get a file, you just use a feed mapper where it's very easy to add uh, the file into the system and it auto maps most of the fields directly, the fields in the PIM and the fields in the file, you just map it one by one. You give it also the images you can import, same as all the attributes. And every single time that supplier or that uh, wholesaler is going to give you that file, uh, you're just going to import it and you just get it back why, how, how it went. So in this situation, it added 240 new products and updated almost 9,000. But if it fails, you also get back why it fails. So in this situation, all the headers were missing, but it can also be maybe there's a double EN because it's a unique identifier. You don't want to have a double in there. Uh, another thing here is like an extra validation. So if let's say if you have an intern uh, who can do the import, but there's still somebody needed to really validate it. So there's extra permissions and extra rules that you can set up uh, from the system. Uh, so that's uh, our permission rules. Basically, you can give different roles, different accesses. So maybe someone from sales has to get into the PIM because they want to know about uh, which products uh, are related to certain spare parts or the other way around. And the same thing for customer service. So they just get the reading rights. And that intern we were talking about, maybe he can just log in, see the dashboard, and just see the import, uh, the import overview. So it just can really limit people there. So and just from a uh, customer service perspective, so the easy way 
basically using the PIM is where you say, I have a question, I have a thermometer that's broken for my Kamado XL. You just can quickly just go into the PIM and find the right, right solution. So you just go to the Kamado XL, you go to the spare parts, you find the right thermometer. And from here, from the right thermometer, you just get everything that you need because you've set up all the content from here. So from here, uh, you get the price, the SKU, EN, and maybe even uh, the sales, uh, the sales channels uh, where they're active on. So that's a very easy way, one, to manage all your content, make sure your content is full and easily completed, but also get all the product relations in there. So it can from here go to a sales channel, it can go to a marketplace or maybe to a dealer uh, that wants it in a, uh, in a feed. So that uh, concludes uh, the demo on my part. And I want to thank everybody uh, for their attention and uh, hope to see everybody in the, in the Q&A. Cool. Thanks, Raul.